Hello one and all, Pipes here, and here's the next exciting instalment of Abandoned Cinema Scene Stroke 80 Scene. Um, it's been a quite quite an eventful week actually, since um, I last put up a video on YouTube. Um, I was graced with uh, having a chat with an actual Naughty Dog artist, Texture Stroke Shader artist, um, which was absolutely brilliant. I spent about an hour chatting with him. Um, we were going through my portfolio, doing some critiques on the portfolio, also looking at textures and talking about techniques and what kind of programs are best to use. And just, just generally just uh, being in awe of actually getting some solid advice. Now, well, the last time that we were looking at things, uh, I, I was moving on to doing the arcade machine, um, which you can see in front of you here. That this is all being textured up now. Um, this was done again using Substance Designer, um, Photoshop, ZBrush, little Substance Painter thrown in, um, and obviously then just composited together in Marmoset. So if we if we look here, we can see we've got kind of the wooden panel at the bottom, the the rubber base, the coin uh, metal coin doors, and all the other entrapments to the actual arcade machine itself. Now. Here's the the rendered out view in well the wireframe view in Maya, showing also the UV layout using as much space as possible, and of course, is Naughty Dog doing a lot of other studios? We just do, for example, this one panel at this side, and then just flip it round so it's exactly the same on the other side, just making sure there's no text on there. If not, then obviously the text would then be flipped the other way. And then we've got the panel there, and we've also got the bezel, screen bezel, and that's the wireframe. Uh, so it's quite quite basic, quite clean. Um, if we look at a, this is just a bit of a close-up shot of the actual panel where we can see the metal underneath where it, that would glint in the light when you rotate the model. You've also got sort of a the, the wooden um, side panel that's all scratched and knocked around different roughness values in there. Slight screen burn where you can see the actual Double Dragon arcade game which was on the screen. Obviously it's not lit but it's got the screen burn from being there from years and years and years. So it's these extremely small details that is what really makes a texture stand out, the model and assets stand out, and that's what Naughty Dog have done in The Last of Us as well. All those small, minute details all add up, and that's why it's such a masterpiece. So if we look at um, the next image, that's the the rear. Again, um, in this in the actual viaduct scene, you won't see the rear, but I, I had enough texture space that I could actually do that. So um, I added on a, like a lock, and then just a normal map where this um, is indented where the the vents would be. And then a plug, a British plug, just to uh, add that with. And our cave machine cables are not that long because they just place pretty much next to wherever the plug socket is. Um, so then this is the actual texture. Again, we're using physical base rendering. So it's um, for the roughness, it's reversed because we're going to be putting this into Unreal Engine 4. So if it's black, it's metal, and if it's white, it's kind of a wood or a varnish wood. If it's not, it depending on the roughness of what you're actually going for. Here's the metalness again, and the normal map. So the normal sculpted in uh, ZBrush, and then extracted because. Again, talking to the guy at Naughty Dog, you've got to really do everything in ZBrush when it comes to the surface detailing and any any normal map generation, because you get a much crisper normal map with a lot more strength and a lot more artistic freedom to it. I do now have been discussing Substance Painter, but the one issue I found there, it's resolution dependent, the actual uh, normal map when you're sculpting it in. So at the minute, there, you can only go up to 2K on a map where you can go to... Um, <laughs> however many polygons you wish, well, up to say 4 million or whatever, uh, for the, a subtool. So you can really get in and give it some real minute details in ZBrush, which you can't really do in Substance Painter at the moment. If they start to increase the actual texture size, then obviously the clarity will get better and better. Uh, just a side note, it does say rpiper.co.uk, well I've changed the URL and I've also redesigned my website, so it's now at richardpipespiper.com. Um, that was through the discussion with a couple of guys, uh, someone off LinkedIn and also the Naughty Dog um, guy. We were discussing how I could make my portfolio a little better. Um, eventually I'll do a video on that as well. So, 
this is where we are at the moment with this asset and then the next asset that I wanted to do was a piano so let's have a look at how we actually start this so here we are this is the the low poly version of the piano now you're probably looking and saying well those all those keys will be modeled oh that's crazy because it's a portfolio piece I'm, I've decided that I would actually just create a few keys and then just duplicate them across um, if if this was for a proper game resolution and you're working in an engine which was struggling and you needed to do some optimization, yeah, I'd, I'd create a normal map for this. Just be a square block and just have a normal map for the keys. Um, but I thought, well, it's going into the portfolio, not a problem. And again, I've done exactly the same technique as I've done on previous um, assets where I'm going to split the actual mesh in half so we've got half of the piano there um, and I can show you this better if I go into the high poly which is the the mesh that I used to prepare to put into um, ZBrush now I'm just getting some strange see-through there normally that's it okay now this is how you prepare a mesh to go into ZBrush. What you want to do is you want to try and get as uniform as possible square um, polygons. That way when you, you get much better clarity when sculpting in ZBrush, especially on the edges and everything. So try and keep everything square. Uh, we don't only doing half of the, the piano and flipping it. A, it's faster and B, it's hard to tell that it is actually flipped once we we get it into the game engine as long as there's nothing too glaring or any text because obviously the text would be flipped over as well down this center center line so if I just bring up the low poly again, I'm going to hide the high poly, I'm using yeah, control H and control uh, shift H to show and hide um, if I bring up the the UVs for this. So this is the just move this to the side. This is the main back portion of the actual piano itself and half of this square block which is there. Uh, that's the top, the lid at the top. That's the lid here. And this portion is where the keyboard rests. And as you can see for the keys I've only unwrapped a certain amount and then just mixed and matched and duplicated them across to give some variation. Uh, for presentational purposes I've also created a couple of piano notation pages um, there but once once it's actually in the Unreal Engine these will be separate and I can just move them around wherever I wish just to populate the actual scene itself. So that's the UVs. So in effect we've already created our low poly because I'm not. I don't want to be going in and retopologizing again after I've been using uh, ZBrush. So just making sure we've got some nice bevels so that when we bake out the normal map, there's no harsh black lines or anything like that, which you can get. Um, and also, um, with the high poly, it doesn't matter uh, about the UVs. But I'd already done the bass piano previously, so it has got UVs. But it doesn't matter because this is just the high poly variant. So then each part is exported, kept separate like this, and then selected and exported all together as an OBJ, and then put into ZBrush. And when you import that into ZBrush as an OBJ with them all split, um, you can go into the subtool here and then just do a split, group split, and it'll split everything for you there. I mean, you can't say split that many times in one sentence. Um, anyway, uh, so I've got, what I've done is I've gone into each separate piece. So this is the leg itself. I can solo this out. So here's the leg, and we've just gone in, added a few very light surface scratches. Also added in some um, detailing for the actual design itself. So that all this is in the actual normal map, and it's not modelled in. Um, which is the most efficient way obviously for putting this into a game engine uh, come out of solo mode we've got all the other bits and pieces again we've also got a design up here um, which is this piece there's actually two designs there's this one here for solo this we've got a design here which is just the back on the actual finished one is removed and it's just placed inside of the mesh for the base and that's just created using an alpha and using the panel loops facility there's actually a zebrush classroom um, tutorial on that so I'm not going to really go through that which is absolutely awesome I'll put it in the links below and have a good look through that and again we've got this piece now obviously we're only doing half because that's going to be the border where it's split so that'll be flipped across and then once we've gone in and detailed all these pieces we can then export those out 
Um, so then that means that we can put it into X normal and then we can generate um, we can generate uh, ambient occlusion, cavity maps, curvature, uh, normal maps and then we can all put, put all those maps into um, Substance Designer. So here we are in Substance Designer. We've got a base texture here and I'll just break down what's happening and I'll show you the base texture in a second and how I did that. So we've got the the base texture here. What this is, this is um, uh, we've got a multicolor blend node here. So again, if you've looked at my previous videos, we're using a mask and telling it which parts on this model that we want to actually have. For example, the wood or the metal or whatever. Yeah, look at the, some of the previous videos. I think it's video five or four, which goes through that. Um, so if we, when we go into here, we've got the material uh, the blend nodes, and these are the actual final outputs, as you'll see in this window here. So these are the final outputs, and what we've done is. We created the piano wood base, which is this graph. So I just double clicked on there, and this brought up the the base piano. So that's going to be the roughness. These are the base values: roughness, the wood, the metalness, and also I've got two normal maps going into here. One is a very very subtle wood grain, and the other one is the bake from um, ZBrush, where it's got all the detailing in. They're going into a normal combine. And I've also made sure that it's normalized at this point by bringing in that node as well. All the nodes are down here under normal map. You just drag and drop them into there. And then that gives you the output. So that's the basic wooden texture there. So if we go back to Piano Main, you can see that what we've done is we're plugging this into this slot here. So it's all all going into this slot. But it looks complicated, but it's not because technically that is this piano wood base so that's the basis of it that's going into a material color blend node and then what's happening is we're using different um, effects but well procedural effects nodes that we can alter and change and it's much quicker than going in and going into Photoshop and actually doing it yourself now you see this this kind of dirt that's at the bottom what this is using is a position map now what you can do is you can import in uh, by going um, right click import either bitmap or link 3d mesh and then I brought in the actual OBJ of the piano that I've exported out from Maya and then if you right click on the actual um, OBJ there you can click on on uh, right click and then go to uh, bake what was it what did it Let's cancel that it says bake model information so if you click that so you don't even have to use X normal if you wish but I still like to use it I'm a bit of a traditionalist that way but uh, you could actually use this feature here to bake out all your normal maps ambient occlusion cavity um, everything can be baked through here so say you want to do a position map so you do a position if I just get rid of that one so we start off on a clean slate so I want a position map generated so that's kind of same which is sort of the higher points to the lower points um, you can change the actual um, output size which would be like the texture size also you can have it from one axis so at the minute I'm working with Y axis pointing upwards uh, but obviously when it goes into the Unreal Engine it'll be the Z pointing upwards but we can use a Y for now and you just bake that out by clicking OK and then it'll go into Piano Resources and then you'll get all these maps in here which you can then use to drive these instances so this is ground dirt for example which makes sense so what it's using is a position mask which is saying okay so what at what height is each part of these meshes so the very low point is going to start from because it's ground dirt it's looking for the low point and you can kind of see in the thumbnail that's where the bottom of the UV of the piano bass is quite which is there so that's going into there, the position map. And then when you click this, you can start to adjust like the level of contrast and and whatnot. You probably just see it just moving slightly there. You can also see an update on the actual albedo texture. We can move the height going upwards if we wish and really make it super dirty. But I'm not. I'm just I'm just kind of just leaving it at a low level, which it would be. So then that's driven into the material color blend. So what that's doing really is it's just blending these two together. And when you click on a material color blend, and this can be found here in material filters there. So you again, just drag everything in, drag and drop. Um, same for the actual ground dirt itself. That, that's under mesh adaptive and there's all these different ones um, on here. So we can see material color blend. That's 
taking the channels so you can turn channels on and off because we're going to be using diffuse normal high ambient occlusion um and also the roughness uh, sorry roughness metallic diffuse and normal at the moment that's that's the four we're using because it's at true okay so then once we close that channels tab we can look at the diffuse channel here uh, you can change the blending mode if i wanted to make the the actual dirt there a darker just put it into for example multiply but i'm just gonna leave it normal you can change the color of the dirt by clicking here so you might want to take for example you can use the picker and then just pick a color uh, like so and you can see it's changed there and then perhaps bring the dirt into more of a desaturated color see it's making it quite dark there but the speed of it is what is really the benefit of this um and also what this map here is selective dirt and that's just kind of you might be able to see where the dirt's going on the actual um texture itself again these are all controllable with level contrast and variation now this one's looking for a curvature map and at this point I didn't bake a curvature map out but you can use the normal maps so again I've got those two normal maps going through into a normal combine and then if you type in here curvature curve you can see we can get a curvature which will change the normal map into a curvature on the fly which is awesome nice and fast so that's been plugged into the selective dirt you can also put a mask in there if you don't want it on certain areas um, I've gone through mask before I think video 4 again this mask is then been driven into this material color blend and it's daisy chaining along so that's where the ground dirt was where we can see at the bottom that's been daisy chained into another material color blend and then the selective dirt has gone into there and then in this one we've uh, filtered out the channels again by clicking true or false which channels we want and then with the diffuse we've got a full opacity because you can take the opacity down normal we don't want any high intensity because it's just kind of dust uh, roughness it's going to be quite rough because obviously the white is non-reflective and metallic it's not metallic at all so it's down at black and then that way make sure that you make that these are correct for each material color blend because you don't want to get to the end and suddenly have metallic uh, shiny uh, dust or something like that and then for example this one's another dust I'm, I'm just kind of layering things on top of each other very subtly and just getting some details in there when it when you actually hover over and it says mesh data you might think oh, well what what am i just plugging in the obj what am i doing here well this is compact mode but if i press 2 on the keyboard you can see that it comes out of compact mode and it's looking for an ambient occlusion and a world space normals so the world space normals has been baked from the actual mesh itself using that technique where we go to the obj right click bake model information so that's been created there that's then plugged into the world space normal for dust the ambient occlusion it's actually driving another node as well which is some bleach some bleach is where uh, it's using where, where at the top it would be a lot lighter like the sun has actually bleached the wood a little making it less saturated so that's uh, a really nice node to use there again that's using normal world space and ambient occlusion but to to make this an efficient substance for speed you'll see these ms underneath so that's like the computation time uh, using the same node again helps with that so you're not dragging in another node to put it into there use the ones that you've already got kind of like in unreal engine 4's material editor so if i press 3 we can make it compact again so that this dust is then again just going straight into material color blend and then filtering that out and adjusting the parameters there the sun bleach is then going into another one and I mean you could daisy chain as many as you wish I mean this is an edgeware one and that's using that curvature I'm not bringing in another curvature I'm just taking it from that one there and that's daisy chained in again that's the SVG telling the um, multi-material blend which materials need to be on what part of the model and then we've got a brass which I've created previously that's for the pedals that goes into the multi-material blend and then these are the maps that you actually output so substance designer is absolutely awesome um i'm still I'm still experimenting and that's the great thing um about being a texture artist is that you're always experimenting you know i don't know anyone that actually sits down and goes okay right i'm going to make a texture today and it's going to be a brick wall and i'm going to use this texture i'm going to do this 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 and then I don't know anyone that does that. That's the great thing I th I find about being a texture artist is that you can go in and you can experiment and find things. Obviously, you've got deadlines, so you get your basic workflows down, which you know you're going to do. But then after that point, you can really, really go for it and then just do some experimentation. 
And again, in your spare time, you can be making up these kind of generators, these selective dirt generators, um, and making your own so you can do different streaks and stripes or different effects and try that out. It really is a powerful program. And again, with Substance Painter, it, it even even more power to the to the artist, power to the people, power to the artist. What we're doing is we can then go in and do edge scratching where we want it to actually be within Substance Painter in the texture. So what I would say is harness the power of all these all these applications for your benefit. Um, they, they really are. A, a, it makes it faster, and B, I think it makes you a better artist. Especially, a lot of people don't like this node-based way of working. But if you want to get that artistic feel back, just put these outputted maps into Substance Painter, and then start adding in your own details there, which is which is awesome. Now, what I do then is I export these four maps out of here. Um, Right-click, and then it's... Uh, not on there actually, we actually go to the piano main which is the graph that I'm using for this and export outputs as bitmaps so then you export those four uh, out of there and then we're going to Photoshop now I'm going a bit ahead here but this is the actual bakes for that we've got out of Substance Designer and Substance Painter all I did in Painter was just went in and added in a couple more of these very light scratches and dints where I wanted some of the, the the uh, rough wood to come through and also added just in some variations and tones into like the piano keys here and the great thing is when you export out of um, um, Substance Painter it does the blur for you for the mip mapping which is awesome um, that saves a bit of time there and we've got the uh, roughness, metallic and the normal map that's generated out of ZBrush and remember we've only done half of the piano so it's nice and quick now I know this is a long video but I've just got a couple more things to discuss is the base textures for this look like this now when I was talking to the guy at Naughty Dog we were talking about how nice their textures look and how do they kind of go about things and there's, there was a tutorial a while ago from another Na Naughty Dog artist uh, which went through making a brick wall and the final video is where he, he he uses masks that he's extracted from ZBrush for his tiling uh, brick texture where he'll take out sort of like a gummy pass and an outliner pass. I'll put the link down here so you can have a look at it yourself. It's a brilliant tutorial. And what I did was I kind of went in and it looked very step by step because the, the final video is quite quick so you might have to pause it and see what he's doing. But he's using these masks and he's creating tones so instead of relying on photo source material what what's what they're doing? Well, they do use photo source material. Well, I mean, I'm not just saying Naughty Dog, but in general, if you're doing this technique, um, you can use the photo source material, but only for actually getting the tones that you want. So, here's a CG textures wooden base. Now, I'm gonna take a take a, a square such as that, and I'm gonna go. Um, let me have a look. I'm gonna con Control C V. And then I'll get rid of that background so I've got this here. I'm just going to crop it to this. In fact, I could have just cropped it over there, but I've gone around the long way around here. Right, image, crop. Right, so there we go. So we've got this image here. Um, what we do then from this point is we go into the actual Im image size. And I'm going to bring it down to sort of like 24 pixels by 24 pixels. And make sure that I'm on nearest neighbor preserve hard edges. And this is going to make it extremely small. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to, because what we're doing is down sampling it. So when I bring it back and say if I got 512 by 512 and make sure that I've got preserve hard edges, click that. We've now got a palette of colors that we can use. So if I just make this smaller, we've got this palette of colors. And if I take the brush and hold down all, um, you can see our option on the Mac. You can see that we can pick these different tones and variations. And once you start looking at tones and things, it kind of opens your eyes, and you start you start looking at bricks and kind of like walls and wood and stuff. And you start seeing like all these different tones, like these kind of like darkish tones. And then we've got pinks, purples, but we've also got sort of like greys and certain different types of wood. Obviously, if the older it is, they'll have like greens and purples. Well, this is where a lot of the color theory comes in because we can look at creating a triadic kind of um, colour palette um, with or a complementary colours. Um, it's worth looking at some of the colour theory that goes along with this because it all makes sense. So we've got 
this tone, so say I pick kind of that tone there, what you do is you go, it's like I've got the albedo here, you see there's lots and lots of gradients, lots of gradients going on here. And if I double click this gradient for example, now the way that I, I add these gradients is to go down here, um, just cancel that, go down here where adjustments are and click gradient. Now for this gradient here, you'll see um, if I click on it we can edit it. So I'm going to click on this swatch here, just left click on there, and then I can start to pick different colours and get different tones. So what you want to do for the base the base of the wood, it's not actually painted at all, because if, if you look at the base wood itself, it's just a base wood that I've just desaturated just to get some lighting information, some of the darks and the whites, so it's just desaturated. Um, if you press Alt, by the way, and click on the eyeball, it, it uh, just shows that layer. Press Alt again, and it brings everything back. So we've got this gradient here, and what this gradient is doing, it's kind of just giving certain tones. You can see it kind of changing in the texture. So we can really make a really nice, non-noisy, custom wooden texture, um, which is... It, that's that's what gives the clarity to some of the top games i think this is this is how how they, they go about making some some of those really nice artistic kind of designs so we've got another one here and they're all just doing different kind of slightly different tones um and then we've got some crazy ones up here but it's not so crazy because for the actual orangey reddish color this is a triadic um this is a triadic um color theory on the actual color wheel so we, in this one we've got some tones being added in some purples some greens and this will give it a vibrance as long as that middle color is the most dominant then the rest will give a vibrance and it all works in conjunction together and then all these are are just uh, applied with a soft light over the top of that just click that over the top of that um, that wood base that's desaturated and they're all just daisy chained together and then in the end and the way to clip something together because we, what we're also using is a mask we've, we've got some masks and now when the Naughty Dog artist does it on the YouTube video he's using a lot of masks he's created out of ZBrush but because of this piano is quite flat I couldn't get quite good enough masks for it as such so what I did was went into CG textures and just grabbed different masks and just use those with into the actual mask slot of these gradients that way you can start to add in different different parts like I've got a scratches one here if I bring that up that's the scratches and I'm just toning it down so if it was more dis distressed you could just bring that up but I want to kind of just kind of give it enough that it's there and it's subtle and it's not overriding unless that is something that you really want to show and that's just by taking different wood textures and just using that technique of of um, doing the gradients, so it's as it's as simple as as that to get the base. And obviously, throughout throughout the course of making this texture, when I was in Substance Painter, if you look at varnish wood and it's starting to get quite old, it'll start going a bit darker. So there's certain areas where I've gone into more of the violet kind of hues and the dark hues and kind of painted that in myself within. Um, substance painter so like I say use all these applications to your benefit and the bakes that I got out of substance painter as you can see so this is the substance designer bakes then put into substance painter and then just these small slight details further color tones added in nice and clean uh, the piano paper imagine there I just thought it'd be quite poignant on the piano, uh, and then we've got the, the actual holes. But again, that's just in a normal map where the piano pedals would go. Uh, B. Daglish, Ben Daglish, that's a Commodore 64 uh, artist that I strongly admire, along with Rob Hubbard, of course, Chris Husselbeck, and all those guys. Um, as you can see, because that's the top of the actual piano lid, there's a couple of rims where um, beer stain rings there and everything's reflected correctly within the roughness as well so the rings are a bit um, lighter because they wouldn't hit as much uh, it to be rubbing off the varnish slightly this is dark because these are the actual piano holes made the bead shine a little more because it's like the gold flake um, glint uh, 
Um, and the, obviously the paper is quite rough as well. Uh, I've not gone for a shiny kind of paper. This is just more of a rough type paper. Um, we've got the metallic, which again is just the pedals. And you can see the blur where it's taken out of Substance Painter. And the normal map with a very slight wood grain overlay. You can just sort of see that, that we did in Substance Designer. And also those designs. So it's cut in half down there. So then also there's an ambient occlusion and a cavity which we can plug into the Unreal uh, engine into the specific slots because we don't apply that at all now to the albedo map. And then finally put it into Marmoset and there we go. Giving it a light impass. I didn't, it's going a bit slow on my machine but I've set up sort of like some sort of um, lighting setup with a three spotlights and then we've got like a, a plane down here which is slightly reflective just to give it a bit more of a presentational look with a vignette around there and then we can also look at just sort of like these real close-up shots brought some of the piano keys down you can see really see the dints and all the variations in the colors and you can see the color tones as well so these are all not not exactly hand painted but sampled sampled color tones and as you can see there's no back to the actual piano itself because it's going to be against the wall if I was to have a back on it I'd probably put these uh, texture designs on a separate place on the texture so then I'd just use this back portion of the piano base from this side onto the other side so that's the actual um, piano so we've got the arcade machine now we've got the piano we've got the beer pumps next I'm thinking about doing the interior doors of the pub I'm just going through I'm not I'm actually making any list I'm just going through going into that mayor scene and then just picking the next asset whichever one I fancy creating and, and going through it this piano took about a day to, to create so using substance designer that's that speeded it up quite a bit um, Substance Paint has definitely speeded it up. Most of the time was actually unwrapping it and preparing the mesh to go into ZBrush. And um, even in ZBrush it's quite quick because we're only doing one half. So it's not really a problem. And then it's just doing the presentational things and getting it on the portfolio. So I hope this has been really useful. Uh, I know it's half waffled on now for half an hour but I'm hoping that you find it interesting and you've followed along with me so far. But give that gradient uh, Photoshop uh, technique try now because it's okay to get information from some of the top guys and taking advice and everything but if you don't actually act on it and actually do it yourself it's kind of pointless you really need to embrace that information that you're getting from these respected artists and really use it and you, you can see it, it does work and it, it, it does make the textures a lot better that's a lot cleaner with varying tones and it's quite efficient so I'm really happy with that and I, I really hope that your projects are going well too if you've got any questions please send me, send me an, um, a message like I said my website URL has now changed so it's richardpipespiper.com uh, I'll put that in the description as well have a look at um, the presentational shots for this in, th in fact I may have uh, it's, it goes really slow on my machine there we go that's the presentational shot of the piano there uh, that I've put on my portfolio site and also a bit of a, a close up one with the little blur the old uh, classic blur with the paper slightly bent and you can kind of see some of the normal maps and because of the bevels it's got a really nice clean normal bake so yeah uh, I hope everyone's projects is going well and if you want to tell me about them that's brilliant I'd love to have a look at them that would be great and uh, if you've got any questions or queries just uh, post me a comment once again thank you so much for following me this far and have a great day thank you goodbye